uh, in the program, it, it kind of suggests that this is a talk about uh, metrics-like stuff for the Libre Graphics community. Uh, I realize that when you hear that, you're thinking, uh, yeah, this is the first day, it's morning, there was no coffee. Uh, what I really want to hear about is statistics. Um, <laughs> luckily for you, I'm not actually going to do that. Um, the reason being that um, statistics are not very interesting, including these statistics. Um, the numbers uh, uh, to maybe provide a better, better explanation, the actual numbers themselves are not very revelatory. Uh, fortunately, I figured that out while I was gathering them. Um, and even more fortunately, uh, along the way of gathering the numbers, I ran into some interesting things. And those are probably worth talking about, whereas the actual numbers are not going to tell you a whole lot. I do actually have the numbers and graphs and things, and we can look at those if you if you want. It'd be a shame to not look at them at all. Um, but to provide a little bit of background before we see the numbers, um, I, I got started thinking about how the community of users and, and developers works because I'm really I'm really fascinated by 80-20 functions, which is a, a sort of a slang term. I don't know how accurate it ever really is, but there's a lot of those. 80% of the bugs are reported by 20% of the users, 20% of the features take 80% of the time, a lot of things like that. And uh, there's sort of this, uh, this feeling you hear from people every now and then that, that Libre Graphics is sort of like that with LGM, that it seems like most of the stuff, most of the talking back and forth between projects and between users and, and developers happens in the months leading up to LGM and like right afterwards. And I was curious if that's actually true, if that's just the way it, it feels because you're so excited about being here and you're working on your slides late at night and all that sort of thing. Um, so to, to tell whether or not that was true, I decided I had to like actually figure out what the community looked like and that meant gathering a bunch of numbers which um, as you'll see don't, don't tell you a whole lot this is the number of people registered on all of the web forums that I could find I'm gonna scoot over here and see if uh, are any of those project names visible where you can read them there, it's it's not every project out there because this this first slide is just looking at uh, the typical web-based discussion forum where you create an account and it's all in the browser. And um, ultimately, I don't think that this number matters. I mean, if you look, um, the gigantic one there is Blender, which is 192,667 registered users. Does that number tell you anything? No, it doesn't. That doesn't really reveal much to me. But it is interesting. On a, on a meta level to look at how big the disparity is. You'll see uh, disparity in all of these things. Um, so why is it that Blender and GIMP are so much bigger in terms of registered forum users than other projects? Uh, that's a real question, what the actual numbers are not. Similarly, I looked at things like Facebook, which as you'll see, uh, that's Magic Lantern, which is a camera firmware project. It's just off the chart crazy. I mean, literally almost off the chart. Um, but you also notice that there's a little more even distribution there. And I think that that's really because uh, the interaction model of Facebook is so different, right? Anybody, you can create a page. You don't have to do a whole lot to uh, participate in that sense. You just click that like button. Um, Twitter, again, really different interaction model. It's broadcast. It's not necessarily a conversation. So following someone on Twitter um, doesn't have the same significance. Again, Magic Lantern, wacky high. Uh, the thing here is that the uh, um, what you count is following something on Twitter is really hard to pin down because like Blender, again, the first uh, column over there. There's an official Blender Foundation account that you can follow, but a lot of others there's not, like the GIMP one there. That's actually a composite of like several GIMP forums, and um, I don't know what that tells you. Um, <laughs> Google Plus, finally Magic Lantern meets its match on Google Plus, and uh, GIMP is the one off the chart there. <clears throat> But again, uh, the raw numbers don't don't tell you a whole lot. Uh, the the last the last of these graphs that I'm going to show you is subscribers to users mailing list. There's a lot of empty spaces there because, in addition to not mattering in general, uh, this is a really late edition. And so I was emailing people on my way here on Sunday, and I don't have responses from everyone. If you're working on one of these projects, there's a blank slot there. That means that I found that you have an official users mailing list as a 
opposed to one list for everybody, which is a little harder to draw meaningless numbers and statistics out of. But if you want your numbers added to these things, um, by all means, come tell me. I'll, I'll put this up in a blog post of some form. Um, but if, if all the numbers and the graphs don't matter, I think the, the question you want to know is what does matter? And as I alluded to, the process of finding them revealed more things and, and maybe on day one there's some good food for thought in, in what I picked up while I was trying to gather these numbers. Um, the first of those things is that the range is huge, yes, but that having an official discussion forum isn't really the, the factor that determines who's going to have big numbers and who's not. Obviously, there's things like if you're cross-platform, you're going to have a lot more registered users because 1% of the Windows market is bigger than 95% of the Linux market. Um, but actually, um, even if you're, like the GIMP project, I don't want to back all the way up there, but GIMP doesn't have one official forum, but it on the website, the project points people to several forums, different languages, and that's just as helpful to someone who wants to ask questions as having one official forum is, because otherwise, the only way people find a discussion forum is Googling for it, which is exactly what I did trying to find these, and that means I probably didn't find them all. Um, the other thing that I noticed when looking for a lot of these is that occasionally you see projects linking to other projects, but that's actually pretty uncommon, and I don't know that uh, there's a reason we shouldn't point people to other projects, because everyone knows if you're creating something, you're going to use not just one project. Maybe if it's Blender, you don't use any other <laughs> projects, but for everybody else, you use Inkscape and, and GIMP and uh, Darktable and all of those things together, and there's a surprising number of people who on a discussion forum will be struggling with something in, in Inkscape and they haven't ever tried GIMP or they don't know about it. And um, that's peculiar if you're in this room and you know all these people, but that's really not intuitive to everyone else. Um, the other thing that I, I picked up on is that there is sort of a divide between users helping each other on discussion forums and interacting with a project. Like, I, I don't know that we, we, we don't do a whole lot of ask the developers, sort of the ask me anything model from Reddit. I don't know that we put out as many announcements and invite as much feedback on these discussion forums that are basically user-centric as we could. Um, and there's, I, I don't know, there, there's, there's reasons for that. Like if you're, the developers tend to work on mailing lists because if your whole job goes through email, that's a lot more natural and that's not how someone wants to interact if they just have one question, because when you sign up for a mailing list, you don't just sign up for the thread you start, you sign up for all of it. Um, so there, there's some disconnects there that I think we could probably improve on just in terms of like reaching out to whenever there's a new release and that kind of thing. Um, the whole idea of unifying the, the mailing list where some of the users are in the web forum where others are, uh, that's pretty hard. And, and we all know that. I don't know that it's impossible, though, because there are people that do that. Like Mozilla does a pretty good job of having the same discussions available in a web browser and email and in news groups. Uh, if I know there's some Mozilla people here, I'd love to hear how they do that. There's not a lot of good open source solutions for doing that. Um, and, and the last thing to note is that uh, I figured out we really owe for maintainers a great deal of thanks because they do a lot of work maintaining software that I would not want to maintain and I don't know that we did as much inviting of forum people here as we could have. So if you are a forum maintainer, thank you. Um, thank you for sharing your numbers with me, but thank you for the work that you do connecting people. And uh, I hope that next year I at least can do a better job of reaching out to the forums uh, ahead of time. And that's all.